Um, welcome along everybody to the AES online seminar for first time navigators, the AES 24 Compass. Uh, we're joined uh, by Matt, Matt Healy and Donald Loveridge, who are the conference uh, co-program chairs, and uh, Bill Wallace and Fiona Zlotnick from the AES, and myself, uh, Charlie, from uh, Policy Performance. And excited to have you along for today's session to help you navigate the AES conference coming up in, in Nam. First, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the countries that we're all dialing in from and pay respects to uh, any First Nations people on our call today. I'm in uh, Ghana country in South Australia, so really looking forward to coming across to, to Nam or, or otherwise known as Melbourne uh, for the conference in a, in a few weeks and really appreciate the chance to, uh, to visit uh, back on, on uh, Wurundjeri country. So today's event is aptly named the Conference Compass, and we're here to help you stay on course and tailor your conference experience to your hopes, desires, and needs. And the people on the call today are also here to help and doing a mountain of work behind the scenes to make this uh, one of the, if not the best conference uh, that the AS has ever run. It's certainly one of the largest, maybe the largest, and it's, it's already sold out um, other than some pre-course work, workshop. So we have our, on our compass, we have our North Stars. So we have we have Bill and Fiona, and we've got the co-conveners, Matt and Donna Loveridge, uh, who are really East and West. And I guess I'm the, the Southern point in the conference um, compass today. So helping you to, to navigate your way through the, uh, through the event. You'll learn a lot from all of us. You'll hear from us today about how the conference works. And the, the objective is to, provide a rundown of how the conference comes together, what's involved, what's included, give you some ideas about how you can best navigate the conference and get the most out of it, some guidance on how you can personalize your conference schedule and pick those things that, that you would get the most out of or find, find most valuable or interesting. Um, also give tips on ways to connect with people, uh, engage with others and be part of this community of evaluators will be coming together for this event and answer some of your specific queries either sent in advance or during the call today. So please add any questions that you have along the way to the chat and uh, Fiona will have a look at those and pull some together that we can answer at the end. That's that's really it. So I just wanted to say upfront that this is going to be a great conference. Um, it's an exceptional schedule and lineup of speakers, very diverse groups uh, coming together for this conference. They are hotly contested slots for presenters. Um, so there'll be large attendance, great speakers, a really good venue, uh, lots of friendly people, Melbourne coffee, and a big focus on new evaluators. And it hasn't always been that way. When I first started attending the AES conferences in 2013, um, the evaluation world felt like a little bit of a cottage industry. And as an outsider at my first conference, I felt like everybody already knew each other. Um, but there also weren't so many young, new emerging evaluators, but that's, that's really changed a lot. And the evaluation world is age, gender, location, ethnically, socially, methodologically, neurologically, as diverse as it's ever been. So there's a spot for everyone in the evaluation community. So we'll help you today to make the most of your time. As the facilitator, I'll try to keep these sessions to time and offer some tips and, um, uh, but really prepare you to take on the conference in a way that works for you. So a lot of attending and being part of a conference is really about finding your own best, best, uh, best way through. So. Um, we'll, we'll give you some ideas, but really tailor your experience to uh, your own needs. So I'm going to pass now, as we look at the conference overview, this is really a, a factual rundown of how the conference will, will work and the bits and pieces that are part of the conference. So setting the scene, and then we'll, we'll come back and talk about some tips about how you might navigate that space. So over to Bill. Hello everybody, it's good to have you all here today and welcome. Um, 
first of all we're going to um we're going to talk about some i think i think i missed the screen we're going to talk about some key terms and key events um during the conference and my colleague fiona will step in here too when i miss things and and remind me and remind us of what um some of these are about so the first two days of the conference that is the the monday and the tuesday um are devoted to the pre-conference workshops um and these are these are events that you need to pre-register for, that is um, before you actually arrive at the workshops. Um, the group sizes of small, most workshops are kind of around 24 in size. Um, they're either half or, or a full day and um, it's very in-depth intensive learning. Um, we will see if you're registered for a workshop, we will send you your room allocations um, during next week, the week out before the conference. Um, and there'll also be some resources and surveys that will be circulated prior to the start of your workshop. So keep an eye on your inboxes um, for information about workshops if you're registered for them. Um, the difference between the, the workshops and the rest of the conferences is that we don't have a big, what we call a trade display, which is exhibition booths from our sponsors and exhibitors. So that, that doesn't happen. Um, and the registration setup is quite modest, so there's just a few trestle tables. Um, so you walk into um, level one at the convention centre, Melbourne Convention Centre, um, and we will be on that level in front of the rooms and we will be there to help you on the day. Did you want to say any more about that, Fiona? Oh, except that it's fully catered. Uh, so there will be there will be um, tea and coffee and and um, other drinks on arrival and there will be morning tea, lunch and afternoon tea on each of the two days. Now we move on to um, conference key terms. And so what we're going to talk about really is sometimes um, people ask us, uh, what is a plenary and where are they? So a plenary session is is an event or a, or a, a, a presentation that is attended by everybody at the conference. So nothing else happens uh, on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday during plenary sessions except for the plenary itself. They usually include a keynote speech by one of our keynote speakers. Um, the first day plenary will also include um, the opening address by the president, um, um, a welcome to country from by a, a local Wurundjeri Aboriginal elder and a smoking ceremony. Um, the conference support grant recipients will be introduced to um, the conference and a few other things and, and a, basically an orientation to the conference. And so that was what happens in the first day. You can see there on the, um, the right of the screen, the times that the plenaries happen. So there's five plenaries in, in total. And the final plenary on the Friday features a keynote address followed by a panel, which will feature some of the keynotes from the conference followed by very finally a closing address by the president and a handover to the next year's conference, which will be in Canberra. Did you want to say anything about that, Fiona? Move on. Um, so concurrent or breakout sessions, what are they? So they are, the, they are uh, not plenary sessions. These are sessions where six rooms will be operating at the same time. Um, and that is the times that they happen apart from the plenary sessions. And so you get to choose, and a little bit later on, some of our colleagues in the room will be talking through about how you might so, sort of plan your conference and how you might um, identify some of these concurrent sessions that you want to go to. But a current, concurrent session usually contains two to four presentations except for it Ignite, which can contain up to seven five-minute presentations. And so when you're looking in the, um, in the native app for the conference, you'll see that you've got actually times for different sessions, which we'll talk through later. Um, then we've got refreshment breaks. So the conference is fully catered. So every day there's morning tea, every, every day there's lunch and afternoon tea. And we've also have, um, um, of course, it's Melbourne, um, but we do this at all our conferences. We have a full day, two baristas working full day um, with complimentary coffee. Um, and then we have our exhibition area, which is opened in those times. I think we're going to say a little bit more about the exhibition shortly. 
just move on to the next slide and I'm going to ask Cog Fiona to speak to the exhibition. Oh, wait a minute, we've missed one slide. Also, in, in your app and in your conference handbook, which will, you'll receive on the first day of the conference, there's an orientation map which shows you the rooms where the breakout sessions happen, where the exhibition um, and breaks happen, where the First Nations creation space is, and where the important plenary theatre is, which is actually on the ground floor, a floor below where the rest of the conference goes on. And now we move on to exhibitions, and I'm going to hand over to Fiona. Thanks, Bill. Uh, so I'll just briefly explain what um, you can expect from the exhibition, knowing that some people haven't attended a conference before. So when you attend a conference, there's generally booths of all different sizes, shapes, and they're, I guess, trying to um, entice you to come and visit them. Some may be sharing information, resources, others may be trying to sell something to you. Um, our exhibition trade is a little bit different. It's quite small, and the people who are presenting are very much your peers in the industry. So they're a great resource to go and chat to, to network with. This is generally how you would build your network. And we've had feedback from previous conferences, especially first-time attendees, really unsure of how to navigate the exhibition and why they're there and what they should really do with it. So we're trying to kind of make it a little bit more interactive this year, both for the exhibitors and for the delegates. So um, when you pick up your registrations on the first day, you will receive um, a conference booklet that has lots of information in there, one of which is, um, I guess, a scavenger hunt, but we're calling it a wayfinding hunt this year. And the idea is you go you to the different booths, you chat to the people there, they have a special code word, they give you the code word, and then you go into the running to win some prizes. So the first prize is a registration to AS25 in Canberra next year. So it's valued at approximately $1,300. And then there's some gift cards as well of various values, and they will be drawn at the closing plenary. So it can sometimes we have feedback that can feel a bit intimidating walking up to people, but this is just like a nice kind of icebreaker way to do it. And you can often work with other delegates and share the codes. And it's just a nice way to meet people. Thank you, Fiona. On. That's a really, really important um, part of the conference. And we really encourage you to engage with our exhibitors and they're all really lovely people. Next, we're going to move on to the social program, and there's a lot happening on the social program, and so we're not going to talk through everything that's on the social program today. There's um, other things like there's um, informal Welcome to Melbourne group drinks that has been arranged by the Victorian um, Regional Network Committee, and there are some other events that are happening throughout the conference. These are all on the website. They're all in the app. Um, we will be sending um, lots of emails next week, highlighting different events and, and orienting you to the conference. But we just wanted to talk through um, two. And, and so, first of all, we've got the All Important Welcome, which is um, sponsored this year by Policy Performance, which is Charlie Tullock's um, organisation. So thank you for sponsoring, Charlie. This um, welcome function is at the Australian Sports Museum. Um, which is the entered through gate three of the Melbourne Cricket Ground. And it's available to everybody who has registered for a three day ticket and has, when they registered, have said they're going to the welcome cocktail function. So it's available to those people. So when you got your confirmation email, it would have actually had that you selected the welcome cocktail functions as part of your registration. Um, and so the best way to get there um, is Jollymont Station, so there are trams to Jollymont Station, so you can get off a tram and you can walk through Jollymont Station and you can walk to Gate 3 um, and also you can get a train from the CBD and elsewhere directly to Jollymont Station and you can walk to Gate 3 from there. We recommend that you always use Jollymont as your orientation station and ignore anybody who says to you to go to Richmond Station because you are going to have a really, really long walk and you might miss the function altogether. Um, Fiona, did you want to add anything to that? 
two hours, uh, two hours, and it is also fully catered. So next we move to our gala awards. Um, and the gala awards dinner again similar to the similar to the to the welcome. It's been sponsored by Q Group this year and they're our first time sponsor and we, we are really grateful for their sponsorship. This is available to all delegates who are registered for three days and again indicated when they registered that they are going to the dinner. Um, and you would have received in your confirmation email um, notification that you've um, put your name down for dinner. Unfortunately, dinner is now fully subscribed and so we won't be taking any more registrations from dinner um, from here on in. The conference is sold out and, and so is the dinner. Fiona, did you want to talk briefly through the two different um, functions that are yeah. happening this year? Because there's a little bit of complexity. Uh, so we're very lucky to be in Federation Square. So it's quite an iconic Melbourne landmark. Um, it's heritage listed as well. So it's kind of the central point of the city. It's a central meeting place. So we start off at the edge um, and then it's basically interconnected uh, to Zinc. So I know we've had a few queries about how to get there. It's about a two minute walk. It will be undercover. Um, the staff and security will assist us. But the idea is we're a very large group. So without um, a pre-reception, we just wouldn't fit at Zinc at all. We'd just have to sit at the table. So this gives you some informal networking. There are genuinely no formalities and the pre-reception. So it's just drinks and canapes for about 45, 50 minutes. Um, and then we'll head down to the gala awards dinner at Zinc. Um, if you can't make it to the reception, that's perfectly fine. Um, the dinner is definitely the main part. That's where the awards uh, will be announced as well. Uh, so just something a little bit different this year, but really close in proximity. And it's all part of the Fed Square complex. And if you're unsure where Zinc is, if you have ever walked from Federation Square, to the MCG, you would have walked past Zinc. I think unless you know that it's there, you don't really look out for it, uh, but it's on the water and have a beautiful sunset view. The sun will be going and it's Thursday night finals week and there's most likely going to be a game on at the MCG. So it'd be really nice vibe for everyone there and very accessible to get to. Um, either a nice walk if you're staying in the precinct or a tram. Um, and if you're already in the city, the um, tram precinct is free, so you don't have to touch on your Mikey. Anything else, Bill? No, I think that's a very good summary. Thank you. So we're now going to move on to um, the conference app, and the conference app is available for Apple and Google devices um, via their app stores. Um, this is the QR codes here. I'm not expecting you to, to zap at those just now, but just so you know, those QR codes are on your, they will be on your name badge at the conference. They're in the conference handbook. They're on the wall of the registration desk. They're everywhere. And there's also links from the Shed Online um, app um, at the moment, which is aes24.shed.com. And it's from the front page of there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to really briefly uh, take you through some of the highlights in the native app so that you will know uh, some of the functionality so that when you when you actually come to use it, it's not going to be a total surprise to you. So I'm hoping that people can see this. And so first of all, we're in the we're in the iPhone app store and we've searched for AES24 and we're now we've downloaded the app and we've opened it. And the first thing that we're going to do after it loads is we're going to allow notifications. And so we've done that. And now we're going to sign in. And so if you go to the to your account tab, you can sign in. Now, what we want you to do is we want you to put your public, your profile as public and email reminders on as well. That way you can interact with the app. So now that we're on the um, schedule page, you can see that we've got uh, our schedule here and you can search by day. If 
but really importantly we have filters and you can go through the filters and today what I want to do is I just want to choose a foundational level I've applied that and from these foundational sessions now I can click on them and I can add them to my schedule and I'm going to add I think three because I want to show you um, how this now works so we've now got those in our schedule or I'm adding four um, and if we now click on the My Shed tab, you can see the sessions or the, or the presentations that you've selected. And every day early in the morning, you will get an automated email. And that's why I've said turn emails on, which will have your schedule. Now we're going to the directory and I've gone to the speakers and I've found Eleanor Williams. And I just want to show you, we scroll down to the bottom of the speakers um, entry we can see all of the presentations that they're giving in the conference now what we're going to do is we're going to look at our sponsors and we want you to interact with them during the exhibition but also to have a really good look at them in the app now we're in attendees and we're going to pick on jeff because jeff's the managing editor of the eja and we're going to send him a test chat just so that you can see and this is why we don't want you to have your your profile as private because you can't chat with people if you do that. Um, so now we're going back through the chats. You can see other chats that I've done there. Um, now we're going back to the directory and now we will go to the info tab. And on the info tab, we have the room map, which we've shown you recently. We have information about the venues and also the Wi-Fi passwords there. The social program is here. And as it gets updated, we put more parts of the social program onto these tabs. Um, there's a news section, and that section will be updated daily with any conference news that we think you need to know about. There's also the theme, and there's all the all important notifications, and they will be notifications that are sent via the app um, to all delegates who have notifications enabled. We're now gonna to go to the chat, because I just wanna show you really quickly how to do a group chat. We're choosing two people here um, and we're, get, we're tapping on create two and sending them a test message. And now both of these people will get and will be able to interact with us. So we've now got a group chat going there. And then finally, we're just going back to our account and making sure that we've got um, we've got the QR code, we've got our, our profile set to public and also that we've got email reminders on. And we'll just go back now to sharing our presentation. And we'll move on to presentation types. Is that you, Bill? No. No, no. it was uh, me, not. but um, Charlie, were you going next to talk about navigating? I will in a second. Do you want to just give a rundown of the types of presentations? Yeah, sure. Um, so as Charlie said before, we've got a diverse set of um, evaluators and participants in the conference um, and along with that presenters. Um, and then to make it even more complicated, we've got a range of different types of presentation types. Um, and there is something for um, everyone, uh, depending on your energy levels and the attention um, span that you've sort of got. So we start with short papers, which is just a really a 30 minutes um, session. Um, and the duration is about half of that to allow, uh, the presentation duration is about half of that to allow, allow time for uh, questions and answers. And these in these sessions, the presenter is really aiming to communicate a summary of their work and generate sort of more interest, but they don't really go into like masses of detail or cover every aspect of their work. So this is an area where they're sort of, you know, they twig your interest um, and you can follow up with them afterwards. The long paper is what it is. Um, it's a long session. Um, it's twice as long as the short paper session. And obviously within that, there's more capacity to go into um, depth and provide more insights um, from the presenter. So it can cover a range of things from findings from an evaluation, particular meth methodological sort of like issues, et cetera. Um, a panel is what it is. There's up to um, sort of three panelists, generally two to three. Um, and panels can take a range of different sort of like formats, but they might explore sort of concepts. The panelists might um, debate a particular 
topic or they might reflect on their um uh, on their experience as well. And again, the um, the formal sort of like panel part of it is only part of the time slot and there's always time for questions and answers um, at the end as well. The hands-on session um, is is that you get to get messy um, and the, the the degree of messiness might different differ depending on the session but basically the um, facilitator of the session um, engages in with participants and gets them um, sort of to participate in the discussion and so that might be around like a sort of like a mini workshop um, uh, could be a world cafe style type of um, engagement um, and the focus is really on sort of um, participant learning and having opportunities to talk to each other. The Ignite session, um, as Bill said before, is um, very fast, very intense. You've really got to have a lot of energy in paying attention to this because people basically, the presenters have five minutes to get across their ideas. That can be quite exciting. Um, and it's it's the way to sort of get across a lot of different sort of topics or sessions and presenters all in one go. Um, lastly is the big room session. Um, and this takes place in the plenary room, um, but it's not a plenary session as, as Bill um, described before. And these sessions can vary quite a lot, but it, it's to um, um, presenters were asked to sort of um, provide, be more creative when they're pitching their proposals for the big set, um, room sessions. So the format might um, differ quite a lot but it's also to um, get people involved. So it could be a debate, it could be a fireside chat, et cetera. Across each of these presentation types, there's either introductory, immediate, intermediate or advanced or introductory slash intermediate, um, intermediate or slash advanced. This doesn't mean um, about how um, they're not sort of pitched for how experienced you are as a, an evaluator per se, but um, how experienced or knowledgeable you are about a particular topic. And this is to take into account that, um, uh, you know, evaluate, some evaluators and some participants at the conference will be very knowledgeable about a particular area, say maybe quantitative sort of evaluation, but they might be less familiar with qualitative sort of methods. So while they might be advanced on one side, they might um, be interested in learning more uh, uh, um, and go to a session that's introductory or intermediate because they're sort of like less knowledgeable and have less skilled in that area. Um, and if you are a first time attendee and if you are, do consider yourself more of a beginner evaluator, that doesn't mean that you should only go to introductory or intermediate sort of sessions. It just might mean that if you go to an advanced session, there might be, um, you know, there might be a few more things that go over the top of your head because you just don't have sort of that background, but it doesn't mean that you can't certainly go to them. Um, and I think um, uh, Bill mentioned on the app as well that there is um, different filters and you can also filter by um, the conference sort of themes of destination, footprints, um, tools, and journey. Um, and the tools is, again is another sort of like a, a way to sort of like get hands-on and sort of like practical, um, practical sort of sessions as well. They're not sort of like theoretical. So that's the really um, quick rundown of the different sort of like types and dimensions. Um, and there's more information again on the website and on the app um, that you can dig into and look at all these um, different sort of types of sessions. So thanks. Amazing. All right, thank you. Now, essentially, we've given a rundown of how the conference will work, and we wanted to give you some tips about things that you might choose to do uh, to get the most out of your conference. But obviously, work with um, work in a way that works for you. The conference is a huge event. It runs from 8.30 in the morning, a really a full day till 5.30. Some evenings there's a social event. You may have done a, a morning breakfast or had other events the night before even. So it's okay to uh, take some time out along the way. You'll probably need it. So sitting down and listening 
to many sessions can be quite tiring. For some people, networking, chatting, socializing is also tiring. Um, so just listen to your body, listen to your brain, um, and take some breaks at various points when you need to. There's obviously quite generous breaks throughout the day for morning tea, lunch, afternoon tea. But don't feel guilty if you just need time out, even during a session, to just go and uh, sit by the hour and, and take in some sun or, or give yourself time to just recharge. You'll come back stronger for that. So we're just going to run through a few um, ideas here that from our experience, things that might work for you, take what you what you will out of out of these sorts of ideas. I'll start with a couple of thoughts and then hand over to, to Matt and the panel and others for to, to feed in anything else they'd like to share. So um, for the plenaries, uh, or first first block, I should say, how to attend sessions, interact with delegates, speakers, and network effectively. Um, the plenaries are great. Don't miss them. They really set the tone for the conference. They raise the key themes that will carry on throughout other sessions. They kind of echo a little bit back to each other. And they're presented by uh, presenters who have deep experience in this area. Um, just go back one there, Bill, yep. And um, uh, so, yeah, really worthwhile going to all the plenaries if you can get there, um, or particularly those that appeal to you. In relation to selecting your concurrent rooms, um, there's tough decisions that you'll need to make, and you will definitely have FOMO. You'll be wondering what you're missing out on, even while you're experiencing something yourself. And, um, you'll for sure miss out on some great sessions, but choose wisely and spend your time doing some good planning and you will also be part of some fantastic sessions. And the program is very balanced with a whole range of topics um, and, and timeframes, as you can see for the different session types. So you really can't go wrong. But yeah, I'd say um, potentially just try every room once just to get a different vibe, different feel within each different room and consider the session types and lengths that might work for you. So if you're a, um, someone who likes to think and work fast, maybe some of the 60 minute sessions might feel a bit long to you. Um, maybe go for 30 minute sessions or even Ignite presentations, which are five minute sessions. You'll get a lot of variety in the concepts and thoughts, but things will also uh, shift uh, fairly fast. Some hands-on sessions can be a really good way to re-energize yourself. So if you can find those hands-on sessions, you'll be able to move around and interact and talk and, and work with um, work with presenters uh, to pick your preferred sessions. Any other tips from the panel on just sessions, um, session thoughts um, before we jump onto networking as a separate piece? Maybe one for me is, is there is a lot of um, coverage and breadth in terms of the topics. Um, but I know from my own, um, and there is this thing about the sort of competing sort of sessions concurrently, you know, that happen concurrently. Sometimes you might sort of find that there is um, a slot where there's a session that particularly is not, you know, doesn't peak, um, hit on your sort of like peak interest areas. Um, and I think an experience for me is that there's always something interesting that comes out of every sort of session. So, you know, you can also sort of take it as a bit of a lucky dip as well. Um, and, and you're bound to sort of get some value out of hearing um, from somebody, um, even, if, even if it's not sort of on your top of your list. Yeah. Yeah, I had the words lucky dip in my um, speaking notes here as well. So that's a good good idea. I mean, you can lose nothing by just trying a new topic that's completely foreign to you. You might learn a new way of thinking. So yeah, definitely agree with that. So we might just talk networking then. So networking is very personal and we're not here to tell you how to how to do you, but um, if you want to meet people and, and you'd, you'd like to use the conference to find some like-minded individuals, a few things that I just want you to know. So the evaluation community is full of socially conscious, friendly and caring people who want to make the world a better place. And so don't be afraid to just nudge on in with a group of people who are standing around um, and just see if you can just listen in. You'll probably feel maybe awkward to do that and you might feel like everybody knows each other already. But the chances are that they've just met each other for the first time, like you're about to do. So I guess that's a little don't be shy type of idea. 
Um, but in terms of some structured ideas of ways that you might like to meet people, the speakers who've just presented are always more than happy to give more information about the topics that they just talked about. In fact, they they love to do that. They want to they want to say more. They usually feel like they've just run out of time, and that there's so much more that they could share about the session, even just debriefing how it went. You'll see and meet lots of people waiting in food queues. So I'd encourage you just to chat to whoever lines up next to you for the, the meals. And if you don't meet anyone, just loop around again and get a second serving. Um, the coffee queue in the morning seems to work and move like a little slower than some of the others. So that's also a good way to have a, a good chat with, with somebody uh, delegate. Uh, the, the app clearly will allow you to connect with people on LinkedIn and, and follow up so that the, anyone you meet is not just a conference only connection that you can chat with them and meet with them after the event. So add any, anybody and, and even add speakers to LinkedIn that you thought that's a great presentation. Um, I'd like to connect with that person. Just add them on LinkedIn if they're on that platform. The bigger social events particularly uh, give you more social time. So the opening ceremony, the gala awards dinner, and there's a, a recharge breakfast on the Friday morning, just more casual, casual time to connect with uh, other delegates. If other delegates are feeling tough, go to the exhibition and just chat to the captured audience of um, paid sponsors who have chosen to take out an exhibition booth. They want to speak to you. They would love to speak to you about what, what they do, about what you do, about how you do it. The exhibition space is really there, almost it's a safety net and you can talk to, to anyone essentially around the exhibition space and others like you who are milling around looking for people to chat to. So that, that's an easy one. Um, if you do decide to skip a session, you'll find other people are doing the same thing at the same time and you might be able to just chat to others who are having a little bit of time out. That's a nice casual way to have a, a chat with other delegates. Um, but if meeting people is really feeling a bit scary for you and you just prefer to have the breaks as your own time, that is totally fine as well. Um, nobody's pressuring you to meet anybody. So feel free to, to do what works uh, for you. Um, and this venue is in a fantastic part of Melbourne. Feel free to go outside, take that in and, and, and enjoy that space as well. So um, I'm sure Matt would be good on, on networking. How do we do it, Matt? Any, any tips on networking from you? Uh, yep, that's a good question. I think if I approach it from the perspective of maybe feeling a bit nervous or anxious about meeting new people, and I think in particular, if you are going to the conference and you don't necessarily know anyone, um, I would take the view of like, to use a bit of an analogy, take a bit of a like predator prey attitude. So like finding people that are like by themselves or like, you know, in smaller pairs is typically better um, in terms of approaching people. As Charlie said, I think viewing the morning and uh, afternoon tea breaks um, is a pretty good time as well. But I also typically would think of it in terms of if you've got sessions coming up, um, like getting there a little bit earlier as well, because you'll typically find people that don't know anyone else kind of are doing the same thing. Um, but also I think the other part of this is just recognising that, you know, everyone is going to be feeling the same way. And I know as an anxious person myself, when it comes to meeting new people, like most other people there are either going to not know anyone or know very few people. Uh, it'll be their first conference for a lot of people. So, you know, I guess trying to view it as a bit of a, um, uh, a bit of an exercise that everyone's going to be feeling the same. And, you know, you just need to start off by saying who you are and where you're from, uh, you know, what organization you're there representing and asking some of those basic questions to show an interest in someone else is kind of the first step. Um, and that's all that it really needs to start with. I might leave it there, Charlie. Um, Donna, Fiona, Bill, any feed in on, on the networking side? And maybe just one tip in that is is go with your energy levels as well. Sometimes it's easier to go um, put yourself out there when you're sort of um, um, feeling sort of like fresh and, you know, sort of wide awake. I know that I'm a morning person and that, so I always try and... Um, you know, use that time um, sort of like in the morning before lunchtime and that to sort of really do the networking when I'm feeling sort of more confident and sort of more upbeat. Um, and then I sort of flag a little bit in the afternoon. So sort of, you know, people are different. So sort of, you know, that might be something else to think about. 
All right, let's keep it moving. The um, expected engagement and, et and etiquette during the sessions is our next stop point here. So um, one way to think of it is it's all about the rule of two feet, which means you have the choice to be where you want to be. Um, it's okay if you do need to leave a room or you're really not getting much or enjoying a session, it's okay to leave a session. Don't feel bad about that. Um, but ideally, um, uh, uh, yeah, try to try to stick out a session and, and get what you can out of it if you've made the, the commitment to join. In session, really, it um, depends how the session's been, being run, but listen, take in what you can and just be considerate of others uh, around you. And uh, be prepared to ask a question. Like there's usually a little bit of time at the end of each session for questions. If you're feeling like something's really inspired you or energized you, prepare a question in advance. Just don't be shy, put your hand up, make sure you get that chance to ask a question um, and be part of it if, if you want. Clarify or, 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 or challenge, comment, everything's all good. Um, work actively with others in the sessions that you're in when there's a chance. So some presenters, um, it's one thing like Matt's very good at is setting up time for everyone to have a chat. We're gonna talk about this topic. You've got five minutes, chat to someone next to you, have a little meet and greet. Make the most of that time. That's a really good um, and memorable part of any conference and presentation is when you get to be an active contributor yourself. Um, if you are going to a session that's maybe um, a 60 minute session, but you know there's another 30 minute session happening next door and you wanna to go to the one after that, just try to sit near the back of the room where you can get out with minimal disruption to the speakers and to others who've attended. So. Um, yeah, it can, it can sometimes feel a bit, um, if you're shuffling from the very front of the room all the way out the back to get somewhere else, um, I guess try to avoid that or, or know that that's where you're heading and, and prepare for that in advance. Um, phone etiquette, obviously it's up to you. Um, we have the app, which is going to keep you busy as well. But um, if you can, try to just tune into the dialogue unless, um, unless um, you really want to catch up on some emails or something else. In that case, maybe just... Jump out, jump out of the room out of respect for the presenters and just spend that, that time that you need to out of the out of the space. Uh, that was it on that one. Did anyone have other tips about engagement and etiquette during the sessions? No, all good. All right, well, let's talk about the exhibition experience. So we have covered that a little, that there's an exhibition. It's not a traditional trade show, so you won't get to see amazing things like the latest trucks or engines um, or widgets, but there might be some corporate goodies floating around. If you do the circuit, you might find some candies or some um, stress balls or pens or things like that. So yeah, do, do a little tour, obviously play bingo and um, complete that sheet for the chance at a free ticket. And um, yeah, engage with the, the, the organizations there that are um, that are presenting their, their material and their approaches as well. So you can learn quite a lot from the way that different organizations and groups do their work. So that was my quick tips on the exhibition experience. I'd say just spend a little time looking around. Might go to the next slide then, Bill, um, which is about session planning. So this one is over to the program chairs to give a few ideas about how to personalize your conference schedule. We've got about 10 minutes for this and then we'll take a few questions. Yep, so I think this is my one. Um, so I'm just gonna share my screen, um, Bill, if that's okay. Uh, very good. Um, just so that you can all see what I'm looking at. So this is um, uh, effectively the, the web-based version of the um, scheduling platform that we're using. So you can see here, there's all of the sessions um, and I think for me, when I think about the conference, so I've been to every conference since 2015 and I've kind of built up a kind of way of thinking about how I engage with the conference content over that time. Um, part of it is like Donna said earlier around thinking about the sorts of sessions and the levels of um, sort of experience that I have as it relates to the content. But the other part of it that I like to think about is um, almost how can I learn stuff that I don't know? So I actually try to go in with a very sort of like introductory or novice mindset to a lot of the conference sessions. So, you know, I know quite a 
a decent amount about sort of the basics of evaluation, but oftentimes the sessions that we've chosen um, for the conference are applying some of those foundational things, but in very novel contexts. So don't think that if you're sort of, uh, you know, a long-time practitioner of evaluation, um, that, you know, as Donna said, you're sort of excluded from those introductory sessions. Like you might find that they've been pitched as introductory because it's taking the basics but applying them in a very novel way. Um, the other thing is to think about like the session formats. Um, so this kind of goes back a little bit to what Charlie was saying around like the approaches to networking and your Well, seem to have just lost Matt there. So we'll come we'll come back when Matt unfreezes. Um we take a few questions while we're waiting. We did have some in the chat. So Fiona, did you wanna you might have to Re reframe your presentation again. We can do some of the pre-submitted ones. That might be the quickest. Um, are there any buses for delegates to get to and from the MCG or Zinc? No, there are not. Um, if you, when you get here, you'll see the area is just kind of gridlock. It is genuinely always quicker to catch public transport rather than um, buses, uh, sorry, rather than, yeah, um, buses, you're going to be stuck. Um, Google Maps with PT options is generally the best way to plan things out. Um, just put in your desired arrival time. Um, so that was the first one. Uh, we also had questions about dress code. A lot of questions about dress code. Um, there is no formal dress code. What we would advise, I guess, is business casual, whatever that means to you. We encourage people to dress up a bit for the Bala Awards dinner, um, just people generally like to do something like that, but there's no pressure. You'll actually find that. By the way, there's a pretty casual kind of bunch for the most part, and it's just a matter of trying to be as comfortable as possible. Um, you are on your feet for a lot of the day. Um, in between the sessions, there's a lot of standing. There's not a huge amount of seating space in the exhibition area. Uh, Charlie, do you want to go back to Matt? And just whilst on comfort yeah. too, you're in a giant air conditioned space yeah. for long hours. So please ensure that you keep yourself hydrated and drink lots of water. Yeah, sorry, Matt, we did lose you partway through the presentation and sleep. Right. Yes, sorry about that. Uh, there is power outages still happening in my area, so I lost my internet and power there for a second. Um, so what I was trying to get across is that when I approach selecting my schedule sort of sessions, what I typically try to do is, I guess, expose myself to things that are quite new or different to what my usual practice looks at. So um, it, that either stems from content areas, um, but also like the presenters themselves. So um, having been around for quite a while, um, there are names on here that I recognize from past years. And so I've either, I don't want to say heard what they've said before, but for instance, um, Julian King's session on value for money, like I'm familiar with some of his sessions and some of the content. Uh, I'm intrigued about what he's going to maybe talk to. Um, but one of the things that you can see here, and actually maybe if I go to my own personal one, that makes it a bit clearer, is that I've got competing sessions here scheduled at 11 o'clock. So there's actually three different ones that I'm interested in and that I haven't actually made in my own mind at this point a determination as to which ones I'm most interested in. Uh, so like Charlie was saying before about your sort of energy levels and sort of where you're at, um, for me, there's kind of maybe three on my short list and almost in the moment, I will make a call to which ones I go to. Um, I know all of the talk, uh, all of the speakers for these three sessions, um, but they're all very different and they all appeal to me for different reasons. And so I'm kind of, almost flagging for my future self-benefit, you know, these are three that me in that moment at 11.50 or 10.59 on that first day, here are three that that version of myself will probably be interested in and I will make a call in the moment. Um, some of the things you may find and we're hoping we've kind of um, addressed a little bit is that some sessions will be more popular than others. And so you might find sometimes that you get to a room and it's very full or um, you know, it's not sort of comfortable for you to just be standing the whole time. And so it can be good to maybe 
uh, you know, not feel as though you have to choose between competing sessions, but actually say, well, there's a couple here that I'm interested in. I'll put them on my shortlist for the schedule. Um, and, you know, in that time, I might find um, that, you know, one appeals for different reasons or for logistical reasons. Um, maybe it's better to go to one session than the other. But the other thing that you'll find um, before I kind of stop uh, speaking here is to the point around networking is that you will meet people organically across the conference. And sometimes the conversation will be really good and you don't want it to end. And you will invariably have this moment in the conversation when the, the bell tolls and it's time to head to the first session where me and Charlie are chatting and we're like, oh, we don't quite want to finish chatting yet. Where are you going next? And then they will say, oh, I'm going to this session. Um, and you know, it might be not one of the ones that you've selected or it could be one of the few on your shortlist. Um, so kind of being almost aware of not just the session you want to go to, but a few options at those different time points um, can just make those moments a bit easier um, for yourself as well and kind of reduce the cognitive load of having to make a decision in the moment. Do I stop talking to Charlie and hope I come across him again later or remember that I can chat to him through the app? Um, or do I just say, thanks, see you later. Like, I'll take this chance to end the conversation because... Um, you know, I've, we've had our chat and I'm ready to go on to my next thing. So your scheduling isn't just about a sort of linear process. It's actually about giving yourself options and almost that gift to your future self um, as to what you might want to look at um, for different reasons at different points in time as well. All right. um, so I'll stop there because I know there's a few questions. Yes, there's a few questions. I'll just do one shameless plug. Um, there is, I'm running a session on the first Wednesday. If you can just put that back up, Matt. Um, it's all about um, an evaluation overview for essentially new or emerging evaluators. And also partly it's about finding your way through the conference and partly it's about networking and making sure that if you are at the conference and you're feeling alone and it's your first one and you don't know anyone, that you shouldn't leave that session without one buddy or, or some friend that you've met through the discussion. So There'll be a little bit of networking. That'll be a little bit of an overview of the of the um, of the conference and ways to find your way through. But also an overview of the evaluation field more broadly. So you might help to pick the things within that field that are interesting coming up at the conference. Um, so yeah, some questions that have come through. There's some about just the spatial layout and and where to go. Um, there is a quiet space feel. Maybe if you can put the map up and we can point to that a little. The quiet room, yep. Um, do you want to just point to that on the map? It's up, It's opposite the registration desk, but people, in, in, it's quite clear in all the information that we put out that we okay. want people to come and ask us about it. Yep, so there'll be some quiet space. Uh, other questions, uh, will we share travel tips to the function venues? Um, I guess that would be probably part of some of the plenaries and discussion about how to get from A, A to B's, presuming. So yeah, I guess you'll see you'll see everyone heading in similar directions for the major functions in any case. Um, the different rooms for each sessions, are they close to each other? Yes, they're all they're very close. Um, either you're in the plenary session, the plenary space, the, the large forum hall um, for the plenary or for big room sessions, or you're in breakouts, which are all really in a, in a line. Uh, will there be any recordings of the sessions? Um, no, I don't believe so, but there will be PowerPoint share, shares after the event of the slides from presenters who've been happy to share, which is the majority, uh, who'll be happy to share their slides. So that's one way you can catch up on some sessions you may have missed out on. Um, someone is exploring how they can take on individual consulting, partner with others, ideas on how you can connect with fellow evaluators or consulting firms for collaboration. Well, that's just a, a clear call out there for the exhibition space. So maybe chat through, chat to people at the exhibition space about what you do and how you work and the sorts of stuff you'd love to do in future. Um, this is getting pretty hard to read. What's the dress code would love to be provided? Tips and ideas on how to join the mentorship program. I believe there's a session on the mentor program as part of the conference. Um, not entirely sure when was it Wednesday afternoon. It was Thursday, but we'll put I'll put answers with all of this and send through this slide deck to everyone who's here. Yep. Okay. 
Are there designated breaks between sessions? Yes, um, there's morning tea, that's half an hour, and there's a lunch break and an afternoon tea break as well. Uh, will conference papers be available? Again, it's presentations will be available. I'm not too sure about conference papers. Conference papers won't be available, but presentations will be available within about six weeks of the conference closing. It takes quite a while to get permissions and things um, to, to publish them. Yep. Everybody who's been to the conference will get a notification email when they're available. Okay. Any other questions from anyone on the call, either verbally or on the chat? Hopefully you're feeling a little more way found and uh, feeling comfortable with what, what what's coming up. It's only a few weeks away. Um, yeah, it is, a, it is a great venue, lots of um, nice bright spaces and uh, yeah, loads of really interesting presentations ahead. So good chance to get a look into other people's worlds and the things that they've been working on really over the last year or two that we can learn from or just engaging with general ideas around the evaluation world. So you'll have a lot of fun. But like I said, main message is just kind of do it your way. Like this is all just tips and ideas. Um, don't fully overload yourself. It is a massive amount of time to be listening and engaging with particularly new ideas. Um, you can really burn out over three, think of it as three really full on days at work, um, um, energizing at times, but just be aware you'll, you'll probably get kind of tired because even your, the downtime breaks, uh, also lots of listening, chatting, engaging, so you can get quite worn out at, um, throughout the conference process, but it'll depend on, um, on how you go and um, yeah. Enjoy. That's really it from us. Uh, any final comments from the panel? Look forward to seeing you all in Melbourne in just uh, two weeks' time. Yep. Ditto. Yeah. Catch you all then. Hopefully see you at the um, the Wednesday session for new evaluators or, or, or new first-time attendees.